The Mitten Tree, written by Candace Christensen, illustrated by Elaine Greenstein, published by Scholastic. At the end of a long lane in a tidy little house, old Sarah lived alone. Her children had grown up and moved away, but Sarah still remembered the mornings when she walked with them to the blue spruce tree where they waited for the school bus. Now each morning she opened her shutters and watched for new children to arrive. Every chilly morning, Sarah pulled on her warm coat and started down the lane. As she walked past the children on her way to the mailbox, she wished they would smile or wave, but they never did. The children didn't even seem to notice her. Still, when she saw them, she couldn't help but smile. One winter morning after the first snow had fallen, all the children were making snowmen and throwing snowballs, all except for one little boy in a blue cap and coat. Even his boots were a dark shade of blue. He stood away from the others with his hands sunk deep in his pockets. When the school bus arrived, he lingered behind and was last in line. As Sarah watched the little boy climb into the bus, she could see one thing, he had no mittens. All that day, Sarah couldn't stop worrying about the little boy with no mittens. Late in the afternoon, as the sky grew dark, Sarah dug through the basket of yarn scraps she had saved for many years. She found her needles and four shades of blue wool. Then Sarah began to knit. Sarah worked late into the night. When the sun began to rise, she hurried to the bus stop and hung the mittens on the old blue spruce tree. From behind the hedge, Sarah watched. The little boy was the first to arrive. He saw the mittens. He reached up and tried them on. They fit. With a big smile, he made a perfect snowball and threw it high into the winter sky. Soon a little girl in a red coat arrived. Her mittens didn't match. That night, Sarah knitted with red yarn. Every day now, as Sarah went to the mailbox, she could watch for children without mittens. Then she would hurry home and knit. Early in the morning, she would hang the new mittens on the tree. The children loved the game. Each day they would search under every branch and bow for another pair of mittens. Once or twice, Sarah thought that the boy with the blue mittens had seen her but he always looked away. Night after night, Sarah knitted mittens in every color. Some had stripes, some had hearts, some even had little snowflakes all over them. Somehow, even though she had never spoken to the children, Sarah felt like they had become her new family. On the last day before winter vacation, Sarah awakened before dawn. She took the empty basket that had once held her yarn and filled it to the brim with mittens. Out the door and down the steps she headed. When she got to the blue spruce tree, she hung the mittens on every branch. The boy with the blue mittens was the first to arrive. He stood very still and waited for the others. In fact, all the children stood very still for a few minutes looking at the mysterious, beautiful mitten tree. When they boarded the bus, each child now wore a pair of mittens. Sarah watched as one by one their faces appeared in the bus windows. Still, no one looked her way as she started home. But Sarah's heart was full it was as full as when she, the sounds of her own children had filled her house. As Sarah neared her porch and climbed the steps, she saw something waiting for her. There in the corner was a basket woven with thick brown vines and decorated with a large white bow. In it were balls and balls of beautiful, colorful yarn. To this day, Sarah knits mittens for all the children in her town. Every time her basket is empty, a new full one appears. Sarah doesn't know who the yarn is from. The children still don't know who the mittens are from, but someone must.
Hello friends, you have just finished listening to The Mitten Tree and we are going to get started on our art project today. Uh, what you will need from your art kit is your paint and a paintbrush. You will also need a pencil and a sharpie um, and you will need a piece of paper out of your paint pad. Now, um, outside of your art kit, you will also need some table salt. All right, let's have some fun. For our art lesson today, we are going to be drawing and decorating a mitten. From the pictures that you just saw, um, mittens and gloves can have some really fun designs and patterns on them. So that is one thing that we are going to be adding into our mitten today. All right, so for the basic form of your mitten, you're going to use your hand as a template. Now, gloves, you have individual fingers for, but mittens, your fingers are together in one area, and then there's another part for your thumb. We want our mitten to be fairly big and cover most of your paper. So, Use your hand as a template, but what I want you to do is go around it, kind of like you're doing maybe like bubble letters, and really fill up your page with your mitten. Now at the very bottom, your mitten is going to have a cuff, and that cuff is going to um, be part of the decorations as well. After you have your basic shape of your mitten and to where you are satisfied with um, what you have on your paper, we are going to make some areas to uh, create designs and patterns. Uh, the first one is going to be the cuff. So I've closed it off here and I want to give it a top area to the cuff, okay? Um, and so from here, uh, you have a choice. You can make horizontal lines across your mitten to create spaces where we will put patterns, or you could do uh, vertical lines across your mitten to create spaces to add patterns, or you can do a combination of horizontal lines and vertical lines. I'm going to leave that up to you. Um, but I think I am going to do all horizontal lines. Now, within these horizontal lines, you can decide what pattern you would like to create. Uh, some ideas might be zigzags, circles, hearts, um, maybe a geometric pattern, maybe wavy lines. Okay, so those are some options. I am going to start with my cuff. And I'm creating an area where I can paint different colors. So I will choose one color for the bigger spaces and a different color for the inside spaces. Now you can choose to do all of this in pencil first and then go over it with your Sharpie, but you could also take your Sharpie and be brave and see what happens.
am satisfied with my pattern, I made an A, B, C, A, B, C pattern. Okay, now we're going to wake up our paint. Uh, this is the first time I've used this paintbrush. It's uh, pretty stiff still, so I'm just going to pinch it a little bit and wake up my paints. So when we're painting, the first area that we're going to paint and let it dry is the inside of our mitten. We're not going to do the background yet. So decide which colors you would like to wake up and just put a little bit of water in them, dab it around, and fill your paintbrush with, water, uh, with color. When you're painting, you want to pull your paintbrush down. So I'm just pulling down. I'm not going back and forth. And you can see that all the bristles in my paintbrush are staying together. They're not fanning out um, because I'm pushing too hard. My bristles are staying nice and wet. Now I want to look and see, is there any other area that I want this color? And I want to keep going with that same color. You can fill your paintbrush up with lots of color and pull it along. I'm not going back and forth. And if you need more color, just grab it. Go ahead and spend the next few minutes filling the inside of your mitten with color. some areas that you would like to leave white that is perfectly fine to do you do not have to fill the whole thing with color if you would like to um, leave some areas white
step of our, our project is going to be the background of your mitten. Now, I have a lot of purple in mine, um, so I'm not going to choose purple as my background because I want there to be a contrast. I don't want the purple of the mitten to fade into the purple of the background. So I have seen some really beautiful background colors of orange or blue. Now, this last part for the background, um, you can choose your color of background, but you can also choose to do this last step as well. Um, and the last step is kind of making it look like there is snow falling or some freezing ice out there. So what you're going to do is you're going to fill up whatever color you want your background with lots and lots of water. The trick to making this fancy background is um, to leave do you see how there's like puddles of water here? And if there isn't enough, I'm just going to dip my brush into the water to add more water to the color that I have. So once you have the color on your background and you can see lots of uh, water puddles, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of table salt and watch what it does. And you're just going to leave that table salt on as it's drying. And you see how the salt kind of um, takes up the extra water and color. So you're going to do a little bit, little areas at a time, and then add the salt so it doesn't dry up on you. Now you can choose to do the salt or not. You can just do a plain uh, color, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but if you have salt, you might wanna try it, it's kind of fun. Remember a little area at a time and then sprinkle your salt. And I just pinch it and drop. mitten flat to dry and the salt will actually absorb and stick to your art project. We hope to see some beautiful beautiful art projects. Um, maybe you emailed to us. Um, definitely subscribe so you can see the new art projects as they come out. Until next time. Bye friends.